All right, welcome to Christian Overcomers, and thank you for joining us for this Bible study. Today we're going to cover Daniel chapter 7, and we're going to title it, The Vision of the Four Beasts. And this is a vision concerning one worldism that shall arise in the last days, and beloved, you are seeing it come to pass even as I speak. Are you awake? Are you alert to the signs of the times? Well, this chapter will give you an in-depth view of of what is happening in our world today. So let us uh, let us read Daniel chapter 7 verse 1 and it reads In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Now Daniel had this dream in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, which who was the final king of Babylon. And uh, those of you who have been studying along, you will notice that this verse is not in chronolo or this chapter is not in chronological order. It's actually going back in time before chapter uh, chapter 6 and chapter 5. Um, for the deeper student, it's actually uh, approximately 14 years. Chapter 7 takes place approximately 14 years before Daniel chapter 5. So, um, verse 2. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. So Daniel is getting a vision from Almighty God. And this vision will be concerning the world events that will take place and are taking place even at this time, foretold of thousands of years ago, over over twenty, about twenty five hundred years ago, the things that we are seeing today were written of in this chapter. And it, it is so amazing to see God's word come to pass exactly as it is written, and it always does. It's just that man. Sometimes just doesn't want to listen to God. They want to do their own thing. Or they just lack the faith to believe that God's word is true. But beloved, we're coming to that time where you must be mentally and spiritually prepared and forewarned by God's word of the events that are, that are about to transpire. Or you may, uh, may be deceived by the false one. And his kingdom. And it is written even in Matthew chapter 24 that the deception will be so great at that time that if it were possible, even God's elect could be deceived. So you must anchor yourself in God's word. Become familiar with it. Study it. Absorb it. Pray for understanding. For this whole book is God's letter to you to instruct you to warn you, to teach you, and to help you grow as a servant of His who is ready to take care of business in this life, to be an example to others, to be that, that beacon of truth in a dark world. How about you? Are you spreading forth that light? Are you absorbing our Heavenly Father's Word and then sharing it with others, planting seeds of truth? So, just to comment a little bit on verse 2, the four winds of heaven um, are also written about in Revelation chapter 7. And uh, I believe Revelation chapter... Let me just double check here. Now it's Revelation chapter 7 and there is another chapter in Ezekiel. It slips my moment at this time. But it signifies that God is in control. And when he's ready to move nations and kingdoms to a certain point, all he has to do is, is blow his spirit or his ruach upon this earth and things will happen. And it is important to note that God is even in control of our enemies, even Satan himself. For Satan is merely a pawn 
in God's overall plan. He is being used as a tool to test God's children, to, to refine them, and to see whether they will love God or whether they will follow the ways of darkness, the ways of Satan. It's an amazing plan that God's got um, planned out here. But um, verse 3, And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another. And this is what Daniel's seeing. He's seeing a vision. He's seeing these four winds uh, blow upon an ocean or a sea. And then he sees four great beasts come out of the sea together. And it is important to understand that these four beasts rise up out of the earth um, almost simultaneously. They coexist. They're not, um, they're not like in Daniel chapter 2 where there was a, um, a rise of successive empires and kingdoms. These exist together. And we're going to be talking about it. Because these four beasts, as we're going to find out later in this chapter, and I'm just going to give you a heads up, they're going to represent uh, dominions of this world. Kingdoms. Verse 3, or verse 4. The first, the first, the first beast was like a lion and had eagle's wings. And I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. So here we have a lion with eagle's wings. You know, a lion is commonly known as the king of the jungle. So what do we have here? More than likely, we have a superpower of superpowers um, in, uh, as uh, symbolized by this lion. And the eagle's wings, I cannot help but think of America. Now I'm using my supposition here. For as we get closer and closer to these times, these things will become uh, clearer to us as we pray for wisdom, pray for understanding. But what happens to this lion when he loses his eagle's wings? He, he stands upon his feet as a man, and a man's heart was given uh, to it. In other words, he became weakened, a weakened superpower. And I cannot help but think of what is happening to America today. As you see her more and more um, turn away from God and away from His commandments. And you see America beco uh, becoming weaker on a daily basis. Especially under the current administration. That is destroying our nation today. Plucking the wings of the eagle. Off of that mighty superpower. For the wings of the eagle symbolize God's protection. As it is written in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Those wing, outstretched wings of the eagle that we are supposed to trust in. To confide in. To use, to, uh, use God as our refuge in times of trouble. But it just seems like today, we, we uh, as a nation, we seem to think we can do things and succeed without the blessings of Almighty God. Verse 5, And behold, another beast, a second, like a bear. And it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise and devour much flesh. Now there is supposition here that um, the bear represents the nation of Russia. And it is important to understand that the bear, um, when it is in hibernation, or it is sleeping, uh, it may appear as though it doesn't exist. But you better wake up when it wakes up from it. Uh, you better be alert. For when a bear wakes up out of his hibernation or out of his sleep, he becomes dangerous and vicious. And that is what this is referring to. It arises to devour much flesh. Many people think that when the Soviet Union fell, 
that uh, Russia and communism was done away with. But you must be on guard, my friend, for prophecies must come to pass. Verse 6, After this I beheld lo another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. And uh, the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. So this other beast, this third beast, was like a leopard. It had four wings, and it had four heads. And dominion, or power, was given unto it. What does this symbolize? Well, we'll come back to this after we read verse 4. Uh, after we ver read verse 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth that devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Beloved, this is your new world order de facto as it this dread uh, symbolized by this dreadful beast and strong exceedingly with great iron teeth meaning it will conquer and subdue and beloved they want to control this new world order that we're seeing arising today they want to control your thoughts your words and your actions and they want to control everything from uh, what kind of food you eat, what kind of health care you have, how much you drive, how much energy you consume. These things are coming to pass, my friend. We live in perilous times as you see the dreadful and terrible beast arising. Are you prepared mentally for this and spiritually? For God is calling out a people who are going to defeat this beast. Oh, it may look dreadful and scary and terrible, but do you remember how dreadful and scary that uh, Goliath appeared to Daniel? Did Daniel whimper? Was he afraid of that beast, Goliath? That giant? No, he took God with him. And he said that he told that giant that this day, that God would deliver him into his hand and he would take the head of the giant. Are you a giant slayer? Or when you hear of the news of a new world order arising, do you think you want to run and hide out in the wilderness somewhere and continually trying to escape? No, we were sent here to make a stand against the forces of evil. And another thing, many teach uh, a pre-tribulation rapture teaching people that they're going to escape this beast. They're going to run away and uh, run away and be cowards. Some would be very offended that I said it that way. But it's the truth, my friend. For all throughout God's word, he prepares us for the moment and the time that this beast arises so that he can use you as a witness against it to be here to help those who are deceived, not to run away from them. Not to leave them. Not to abandon them. What kind of love would that be? It's time Christians start maturing. And stop believing in fairy tales. And escape con artist theories. Yes, I don't say that uh, softly. Because it's, it's we don't have time to soothsay people anymore. We're getting too close to that time. And it's time we start preparing for our duties as a Christian in this generation. So just to comment a little bit about this. Many of you are familiar with the Trilateral Commission. And how they planned, uh, they were developed in the 1970s, um, etc., but you understand how they had a plan of dividing the world um, into basically three different segments. And then after that, 
after the world was united into three different sections or dominions, then they would have the opportunity to unite all three of those into one. And I believe that's what you're seeing here. All written about. First, second, and third beast representing those three uh, world uh, uh, geographical dominions. And then the fourth beast comes. And unites them all together. And beloved, it is documented in God's word that this is going to come to pass. And we're going to uh, just hold your finger there in Daniel chapter 7. Give you a little bit of homework to do. We'll go to Revelation chapter 13. And you're going to see this same beast all mixed together, all blended together into one. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, or ten kings, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. Now what does this beast look like? Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. So there we have it, the lion, the leopard, and the bear, united in one to form an anti-Christian, socialistic new world order. But who is behind all of this? It didn't really say in detail, and it's not going to really say in detail too much in Daniel chapter 7. But it's the dragon, that hidden power of Satan and his children, the Kenites, who have built this beast system, who have plotted and planned throughout every generation since Cain left the Garden of Eden to acquire world dominion. Those of you who, who are God's elect and who have eyes to see and ears to hear and know, who, and know how to count the number of the beast, you understand of, of what I am speaking of. If, if you don't understand what I'm speaking of, put it on a shelf and come back to it later as you pray for wisdom and understanding and seek God's word and those things will be opened unto you just like that as you prepare to serve your Heavenly Father. But back to um, Daniel chapter 7. Just wanted to point out to you in Revelation chapter 13, that same beast is mentioned again. Verse 8. And I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now let's just comment a little bit on the ten horns. The ten horns are going to be ten world leaders who will control and lead the entire world at this time. Um, at this time of when the beast fully arises from that sea, the sea of peoples. But what happens here? This little horn comes up and he starts speaking great things. The little horn is another title of the Antichrist. And those of you with companion Bibles, you are blessed because um, it gives the list, it gives a list of 12 titles um, that the Antichrist is, uh, commonly goes by. And I'm just going to read, uh, read them here. Um, the King of Babylon, the Assyrian, Lucifer, the prince that shall come, the king of fierce countenance, the vile person, the willful king, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the wicked or the lawless one, the beast with ten horns. Those are merely different titles of the same person, the same entity, Satan as Antichrist. So many people get confused when, they, when they're learning about the Antichrist. 
And they think that um, the Antichrist is going to be a flesh man coming up out of Europe or Rome or somewhere like that. And they do not understand that the Antichrist will be none other than Satan himself as it is written in Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 when he appears in his supernatural body, his angelic form with his fallen angels claiming that he is God and that he has come to bring God's kingdom to this earth to deceive the world. You see, a flesh man isn't going to deceive the world. Oh yeah, we get a couple of flesh men that people fall after a few nuts here and there. But this deception is going to be much greater than many think. For again, it's going to be so great that even if it were possible, God's elect could be deceived. So we're speaking of Satan himself who will come speaking great things, doing many miracles and all kinds of wonders. Verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Who is the Ancient of Days? Well, this is none other than our Heavenly Father. Sitting upon His throne and in His garment white as snow means the, uh, to symbolize purity. What an amazing sight this must have been for Daniel to see this. He sees the rise of these, these beasts that come to, to take over the world. And then he sees the Antichrist, Satan himself. But then after that, he sees Almighty God sitting upon His throne coming to bring judgment to this earth and to, to put down the Antichrist and his powers of evil. For those of you deeper students, you understand, um, or take a look at Ezekiel chapter 1. You will understand what uh, many people call UFOs today are merely vehicles that God and his angels use. Even Satan and his fallen angels uh, use those as means of transportation. And as it is written here, it says his throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire. Verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands or thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. What an amazing time that's going to be. How is your uh, name doing in that book? Are you stacking up lists of good things that you've accomplished for him? Because uh, judgment for God's people, God's servants, is rewards, not punishments. And we should look forward to that day when we can boldly walk in and claim um, our rewards for being in the king's service. Verse 11, And I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. Okay, he could make many great speeches, say many wonderful things. And you all know that Satan is going to be the best speaker, the best influencer, the best persuader that this world has ever seen. And I beheld, uh, even till the beast was slain and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. And that is, um, it, it actually it is written in Ezekiel chapter 28. Uh, I believe it might be around verse 18 somewhere. That Satan, um, that Satan was given the death penalty. And it was written that his uh, soul would be turned to ashes from within. That he would be consumed with fire. And it is important to understand 
that throughout the Bible and in Second Thessalonians chapter two, it mentions the Antichrist uh, under the title of the Son of Perdition. It means the Son that has been sentenced to death, and there is only one mentioned specifically in the Bible as the Son of Perdition, and that was Lucifer, or Satan, that cherubim that fell from his high position. So when somebody tells you that uh, the Antichrist mentioned in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is a flesh man, they have, uh, they have been misled. They are not rightly dividing the word of God. For this is the son of perdition going into perdition. Meaning his soul is being destroyed and he will no longer exist. Verse 12, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Interesting statement. What? 13, and I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. This is the return of Jesus Christ. Verse 14. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. That's why it's so Important to get involved in that kingdom today. For it is an everlasting kingdom. You can be a servant in that kingdom even now. While you see the rise of these other false kingdoms. For you have power over all your enemies. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. Verse 15 I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Okay, this was kind of frightening to Daniel. It didn't look good seeing these four great beasts rising out of the earth. It looked terrible. You know, and many people today, when they see these things happen, and they're seeing the rise of uh, this new world order that we're seeing today, it's, it's terrifying to them. They're troubled by it. They're upset by it. And even saddened by it. But understand, it is part of God's plan. Verse 16. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. You know, what does all this mean? Daniel's, he's asking one of the angels. So he told me, and made me know the interpretation of the things. Do you know the truth of all these things? The truth of these four beasts that rise out of the earth? Do you understand on how uh, do you understand how this uh, anti-Christian socialistic new world order is being formed? Well, it is explained in this vision given by Almighty God so that you can understand, so that you can be informed. And, more importantly, so that you can be prepared to fulfill your destiny if you have the courage and the guts to make a stand. You know, Christianity is not just some religion we play. It's a reality. It's every day and it's especially, especially a reality. Not that it ever wasn't before. But it's especially a time to be a vigilant servant of His, becoming aware of His Word in this generation. For this is the generation of the consummation of all things, of all prophecies. And you are either, you are either going to be deceived by the false one, or you'll be standing against him. And I got news for many, that the group that stands against the Antichrist will not be in the majority. In fact, it will be a small remnant. A small remnant of faithful believers who have the courage and the trust that God will protect them no matter what happens. 
and what a time that's going what a time this is going to be a time of service a time of sacrifice a time of dedication so verse 17 the angel is going to show him the interpretation here cuz Daniel wants to know the truth and so do we verse 17 these great beasts which are four are four kings or four kingdoms which shall rise out of the earth okay that's all they are verse 18 but the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever don't ever forget that right away when the angel explains he says yes there are four kingdoms that shall rise to control the earth to form a new world order but the saints shall come and they shall defeat this beast system beloved the saints um, are not some special person set upon a pedestal somewhere They're, they are those who study and absorb God's word and who will be willing to make a stand against the false one when he appears so in other words if you're studying this today and you continue to study and absorb God's word this will be you my friend these are the Christian overcomers these these are those who will be standing upon the sea of glass written about or prophesied of in Revelation chapter 15 singing the song of victory singing the song of Moses that they had achieved victory over the beast over his image and over his name because they had never bowed a knee to the false one so we've got the victory and that is so precious to understand that verse 19 then I would know the truth of the fourth beast which was diverse from all others exceeding dreadful whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass which devoured break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet he just completely took over controlled everything meaning the new world order one worldism one world government whatever you want to call it 20 and of the ten horns that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three fell okay a little changing going on there even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things whose look was more stout than his fellows speaking of the Antichrist Satan himself verse 21 and I beheld in the same horn made war with the Saints and prevailed against them see beloved we are in a spiritual war and Satan is coming to make war with you if you are a true believer you will be here on this earth are you ready to make a stand you know it's an honor and a privilege that Satan hates us for if he did not hate us and did not want to attack us then what would we be well pretty much worthless pretty much worthless because we would be not in uh, opposition to him but we would be followers of him and that's not a good place to be verse 22 until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom in other words we have the victory even over Satan himself with God's help verse 23 thus he said he's gonna explain the angel the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth one worldism and shall tread it down and break it in pieces meaning it shall be uh, this kingdom will have complete control a tyranny verse 24 and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings again they are ten kings ten world leaders that shall rise and another shall rise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings so when the Antichrist appears he's going to remove three of those kings 
Interesting. Verse 25, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto his hand until a time, times, and the dividing of a time, or a three and a half year period. And this three and a half year period is mentioned throughout the book of Revelation as the time of the tribulation of the Antichrist. The time that Satan has to reign upon this earth. And what is he going to be doing during that time? He's going to be trying to wear us out. He's going to try to wear us down to the point where we will submit to him. But we never will. We will hold that line. We will stay true to our Heavenly Father. For he will be with us. And that Holy Spirit will be there to lead and to guide us like never before in history. So what do we have to worry about? Nothing. Nothing. We just need to be prepared. We need to have patience. And we need to have faith. And we shall overcome. Verse 26. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion, to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, um, my cognitions troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. I Meaning this vision pretty much troubled Daniel and baffled him. These amazing things that he was seeing way out in the future. And we're living them. We're at the brink of them today. Seeing them beginning to come to pass. You know, what a fascinating chapter. You know, we basically just skim the surface of that chapter. You can take these things and study them more in depth on your own. To understand with more clarity. But understand it goes down like this. The world will be unified in three different segments under the three beasts. Then the fourth beast comes and unites them all together into one to form Satan's false kingdom upon this earth, the kingdom of the Antichrist. Or you could think of it again as an anti-Christian, socialistic, new world order. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed this study. Um, can't wait to join you for the next one. Don't miss any of these chapters in the book of Daniel. So that you can be mentally and spiritually prepared for the all foretell of the times that uh, we are moving into. So stay alert. Be on guard. And be a Christian overcomer. All right, let us close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for your truth, Father, and thank you for this chapter. Thank you for giving us these visions um, down in the book, down in your word that were given to Daniel concerning the times we are moving into, Lord. And we pray that we can be alert and uh, that we can be awake and that you can use us as thy servants in these end times, in Yeshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christian Overcomers is brought to you by the tithes and offerings of our listeners. If you'd like to donate, you can do so by going to ChristianOvercomers.com. God bless you, and thank you for your support.